I'm David, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've presented anything new, and I've been working on some different projects, and usually I like to wait until I've got something up and running or working, or I've completed some experiment. Well, this project is admittedly a little bit half-baked. I don't think it's really gonna work very well as an invention, but it's so interesting that I really wanted to show you. The idea I want to show you is an extension of an idea that I explored with a previous video where I was looking at a special kind of planetary gearbox. If you want to watch the video, you can check it out here. So the new invention, it's a sort of planetary gearbox. Uh, here it is, and I have it hooked up to a motor. It will turn one way or the other. There's virtually zero backlash. The interesting thing is, there are no gears inside here. Instead of gears, there are these ball bearings. I have a little bit of torque right here, but if I jam my finger in, I can pretty much hold it still. And it's just because the ball bearings are slipping. So, I mean, maybe there's some application where you need a gearbox with a very precise ratio that also slips if you put a little bit of torque on it. Now I want to open it up and show you how it works. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on. With the lid removed, it really doesn't work at all because it's relying on tension between the top and bottom half to sandwich the force against those balls. But if I bring this up here, and kind of see the core of it is suspended in the middle of a bunch of ball bearings and that's really it there's there's nothing in there <laughs> don't so i want to show you how it works in fusion this is the model of it actually here it is in its entirety and if you pop the top off, you can see the inside. Here's the stepper motor, and it's got a belt that wraps around the outside of the yellow thing, which is just really a retainer. It's like a couple of raceways for the ball bearings. Anyway, let me turn this back on, and let's look at it in cross-section. And I'm going to turn off the stepper motor and the belt stuff because it looks a little confusing. Here is the cross section, just to give you an idea what's going on. The rotor, which is this part, is just in the very middle. It's the part that turns uh, and has the output shaft. The rotor touches the ball bearings right here. And if I just turn that off, it only touches it tangentially right at that spot there. And the ball bearings are all held in place by, <laughs> by this set of raceways right here. They're on the outside and they have a little, they're engineered to have a little bit of spring to it. So they push the ball bearings in against the rotor. Not only are they pushed in against the rotor, they're also pushed in against this surface here on the stator, on the top part and the bottom part. You can see up close that ball bearing, and this is what's key. If you roll the raceway around the outside, these roll without slipping. And they touch, the, they touch the rotor here and the stators here. And notice where they touch is at a slightly different radius. If you imagine that the ball bearing has an axis of rotation right here, when they roll without slipping, the radius to the rotor is this much and the radius to the stator is this much. So the ball bearing actually acts like three gears in a stack, just like my other gearbox, but it's just a ball bearing. So that's well, kind of interesting. If you could make it roll truly without slipping, you'd have a really neat telescope mount or something. And there's really pretty high gear ratios possible, especially if you make this contact surface closer to the same radius as this contact surface. So the real problem with this design is it's very finicky to get it tight enough to hold the ball bearings against the surfaces without slipping. And if you make it too tight, then it sort of jams and doesn't work very well. I just think it's interesting that you can have a really high gear ratio uh, 
and have a differential based just on ball bearings instead of having to have gears. It kind of bends the idea of where that gearing differential can come from. If you consider a ball bearing as being kind of like a gear or a wheel in the round, you can use those rolling effects to your advantage. So just thought I'd present that idea. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day. If you're interested in just playing with this crazy thing, you can download the 3D print files and the Fusion file. Uh, look for the link down below the video in the comments and uh, have fun. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.